Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to create lollipop charts in R. In this video you will learn how lollipop charts can help you to visualize two categorical plus one or even two continuous variables. I will follow the examples from the R gallery and we will start with the most basic examples. I will show how you can use ggplot and combine geom point for the dots and geom segments for the stems to create lollipop charts. Then we will go into how to customize the markers and the stem, how to change the appearance in general or flip the lollipop chart horizontally, how to adjust the baseline to have some stems go above or below, how to create the so-called Cleveland dot plots and how you can highlight certain elements of the lollipop chart and annotate them. At the end, we even color the stems based on some conditions, making them appear red above the line and blue below the line. Let's get started with the R code. A lollipop plot is very similar to both scatter plots and bar plot. Therefore, we can visualize two numeric values or one numeric value and a categorical value. We start with a very basic data set that simply has 30 IDs going from 1 to 30 and then normally distributed numbers randomly generated if you want to get the same 30 as I set the seed to 530 and I only want to have the positive values so the apps function turns the negative into positive this is how this data set would look x1 to 30 and then some values for y within ggplot we would set x to x and y to y and then at geom point for start and now if we want to add lines to these dots, we have to use the geom segment where the x is still the x position and the y and goes all the way to the y. But for y we set the start to zero and for x and we use x as well. And this is how a basic lollipop chart would then look like. As I said, we can also use a categorical value. Here the letters from 1 to 26, a to z with a numerical value. And the plotting is the same. So here now we get categories a to z with the associated values for y. Let's now talk about customizing the lollipop chart and starting with the marker so changes happening within the geom point function. This is how the basic one looked and now we go line by line. So with size we can influence the size of the dot, 5 makes it a lot bigger. We can change the color to red, the alpha specifies the transparency. So 0.6 makes it see-through now. We can change the shape from a solid dot to one that has an outline and a filling. And now we can specify which color this fill should have and we can make it orange. And the stroke for shape 21 is the outline, which we can now change in width and set it to two. Moving on to changes we can do to the stem of the lollipop. We can change the size to one, making it thicker. We can change the color to blue. All of these changes happening in the geom segment function and we can change the line type to dot dash for example. Here's the reference to different line types. We use dot dash making it look like this but you can also use dotted, solid, two dash, long dash, blank, etc. As always we can change the general appearance with theme. In this example we make the stems gray, change the geom point color to orange with size 4 and then apply theme light. Then within the theme function we can use element blank to get rid of certain elements of the theme. For example, example, the panel grid major X lines before and after, the panel borders, the ticks on the X axis. And if you want to get rid of this X that comes from the X variable, we would change the X lab title to empty character and we can change the Y lab, which is the labeling for the Y axis to value of Y. Sometimes the labels for the categorical variable on the X axis can be longer and then harder to read. And an easy solution is simply to flip it horizontally with the coordinate flip function. Now you have to be aware that the changes that apply to the X variable are now on the Y axis. So you have to change the axis ticks and grid major to y elements. You can easily change the baseline of the chart. It gives more insight to the figure if there is a specific threshold in the data that interests you. All you have to change is the y argument of the geom segment. Before it was 0 and if you change it to 1, the baseline will appear at 1. To show you how to build a so-called Cleveland dot plot, I created this dummy data that has a value 1 based on a normal distribution, again only taking absolute values and multiplying it by 2. For x we use the letters of the alphabet and for value 2 we add 1 plus some noise again. We also build the average of value 1 and 2 and call it my mean and then arrange by my mean so the data would look like this g by accident had the lowest value and therefore the lowest average and h had the biggest values 
the biggest step ridge. If you don't turn x into a factor, then your graph would have the order alphabetically going from a to z. But if you want to keep the order after the arrange, you just set x to be a factor based on the current ordering of x. Now if you plot the data and you start with the points, you would use x for x all the time. So the letters are on the x-axis. We're going to flip them later. So this is already the plot with quarter flip used. And for the y value, you use value 1 and 2 and use two different colors inside 3. Now, if you want to add a line in between these two dots, you would keep x start and end for x again. And the stem is supposed to go from value 1 as the start and to the end value 2. So now after geom segment, we get the following plot. And if you want to have the lines behind the dots, you just have to call the geom segment function first. So if you run geom segment first, followed by geom point, the points will be plotted on top of the segment line. Annotation is key in data visualization. It allows the reader to focus on the main message you want to convey. If one or a few groups specifically interest you, it is a good practice to highlight them on the plot. Your reader will understand quicker what the story behind the chart is. To do so, you can use an if-else statement to change size, color, alpha, or any other aesthetics. Moreover, it is even more insightful to add text annotations directly on the chart. So here again, we have some test data that gets ordered by the highest value of y. You can use the arrange and mutate approach or use FCT reorder from the forecats package where you simply say order x based on y values. So for the geom segment, the stem of the lollipop, I used an if else statement for the color and the size. If it's A or D, it's gonna be orange and bigger. And if it's not A or D, it's gonna be gray and smaller. And the same happened for the point. To add text to the graph, we can use the annotate function, specify text, and then simply get the position of X and Y. We can add a little spacing to the Y value to make the text appear a bit to the right of the dot. And you can also use a line break and insert the actual value where you look up the data Y Y value for a specific x value and given that the y values are pretty long after the decimal i made use of the round function to two digits after the dot and then you can specify the angle and the font face as well and the horizontal just could have been used to move the text further to the right instead of increasing the y value for the positioning if your lollipop chart goes on both sides of an interesting threshold you probably want to change the color of its components conditionally here i simulated a hundred points on the x-axis going from zero to two times pi. And then for each x value, I calculated the sine of x and added some randomly generated noise. Now with a simple if else, we can check if this y value is above or below zero and simply call it type one or type two. Now for the geom segment, we can simply set color to the variable my color. And if it's above zero, it will be type one and get a different color from type two, which is below zero. There's one very cool package called ggcharts that includes a function called lollipop chart that makes creating lollipop charts a lot easier. You will find information on the package on the GitHub page from Thomas Nightman, who also has a really good Twitter page and a blog. And the documentation for the lollipop chart has some examples of how to use it. And for a simple example, you just have to specify the data frame, the X and the Y values you wanna plot. It also includes an argument to only visualize the top 15 companies of this data set. It has an easy way to highlight a single company or value of the lollipop with the highlight argument. And it also includes, as the data frame here was filtered for 2016, a facet wrap argument where you can say, you want to see the lollipop chart for all different years for the top 10 companies and then you would get something like this so all different years already facet wrapped and the highlight argument works as well so now you could visualize one specific company throughout the years and their revenue changes in the introduction i mentioned that Lollipop charts can be used to visualize two categorical variables and one or even two numerical values. David Robinson is doing weekly live screencasts where he analyzes Tidy Tuesday datasets. And here he used the lollipop chart to visualize the difference for one category being different industries and another category being the gender split, women and men. And the continuous variables were the shift in employment from 2019 to 2020, which due to COVID had a lot of unemployment going up, especially in leisure 
and hospitality. And the second numerical value he included in the lollipop chart was the size of the dot, representing the number of people working in these industries. So education and health services have a lot of women employed, construction have a lot of men employed. He then also used the same data set to not only look into the gender split, but split by race, so how different ethnicities were influenced by the pandemic. And here the size of the dot represents the different numbers working in these industries. I highly recommend to follow his Tidy Tuesday live screens. I started my YouTube channel by making summaries of these very educational data explorations. This was a tutorial on lollipop charts and all, how you can make them, how you can modify them. I hope you found this information helpful and join for the next video where I will give a tutorial on radar or spider plots. Until then, see you next time here at the Data Digest.